start with the prayer. Om Samastha Jana Kalyani Neratam Karuna Mayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahma Vidvaram Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Bande Jagat Gurum Tomeva Mata Chapitat Vameva Tomeva Bandus Chasakat Tomeva Tomeva Vidya Dravidam Tomeva Tomeva Sarvam Amadeva Deva Tomeva Sarvam Gurudeva Deva Arium we are continuing the analysis of subtle body. Subtle body or antakaranam consisting of the four essential aspects based on the functionality and we call the buddhi, intellect, the manas, the emotional center, the mind and the antah, the ahankara, the ego and the chittam, the memory, all are essentially a subtle thought process which is essentially a, uh, the made up of subtle elements which we went through in terms of how the consciousness existent self or Brahman became many first through process of the fire creation of the five subtle elements and by grassification the gross elements. The gross body is formed by the gross elements and the subtle body is formed of subtle elements. We are going to more details also but this is the, the structure and in that subtle body includes as we discussed all the panchapranas and five karmendriyas and five jnanendriyas also. So all that is total package is involved. That means all physiological functions, that is the, the pranas, and organs of action, that is karmendriyas, and organs of jnana, knowledge, that is sense organs, all are part of the, the subtle body. Subtle body moves from one to other. Subtle body occupies or enters as though into the gross body to occupy a particular grass body conducive to exhaust the particular the vasanas that are ready to germinate of the total vasanas so therefore the vasanas belong to the subtle body so this is a part of the package that it moves so subtle body along with its vasanas is the one that moves from one to the other that's called so-called transmigration of soul and this is what we are talking about the subtle body and this subtle body with its vasanas vasanas are formed when i perform an action with an ego or willful action therefore it's only in the human form that i can perform and accumulate vasanas all other beings only exhaust the vasanas so according to Vedanta, it is the birth of the human form first and the degradation into lower forms to exhaust it. So anatomical evolution is different from spiritual evolution that we discussed in the beginning itself. So spiritual evolution goes up and down, whereas anatomical evolution, there is a progression of uh, unicellular to all the way to the, to the human where there is a conceptual thought development all that are not are self-consistent in a way as long as we don't confuse or get confused between the spiritual evolution of a soul versus the anatomical evolution which are discussed in the objective sciences based on the objective analysis so the vedanta doesn't contradict or conflict with the 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 the, the, the objective sciences because it recognizes the objective sciences are limited and limited to objective sciences. So they are valid within that frame of mind and Vedanta doesn't question those things because they are valid in the transactional world. 
and Vedanta goes beyond the objective world just as classical mechanics and a quantum mechanics they don't conflict each other but one has to go to higher as we go approach it to the quantum levels or levels of very very fine particles at that level classical mechanics will not work but doesn't mean that they are dismissing classical mechanics you have to tr apply something higher but classical mechanics are valid where they are applied in the same way the objective sciences are valid we do not dismiss objective sciences but they are only within the realm of transactions and they are not absolute science they are only for transactional purposes that is needed so vedanta doesn't contradict the objective sciences but only the extends transcends am i okay Okay. So, we are trying to check whether the recording is going on or not. So, the, the, the Vedanta accommodates that, so, but at the same time it includes the conscious entity also, the one, the knower, along with the known. Objective scientist only talks about the known or objectifiable entity, but there is a conscious entity and knower is involved in all the knowns for the knowledge to take place or even to analyze the objective sciences, we have a conscious entity is required. So now we are talking about the origin of the, of the, of the subtle body. The subtle body is formed because of the, the uh, subtle elements, but what exactly is a jiva has to be understood. So when I, starting point is when I take myself, I am this, that means I am the mind, I am the body and the body mind are limited, therefore I don't like limitations, by nature I am conscious entity, I am infinite, but I, because of not knowing myself, that means ignorance of myself makes me to take what I am not as I am. So you have to understand the, the basis for all this is the fundamentally the ignorance of my own true nature. So that's called a Mula Avidya. Avidya means ignorance. So Mula Avidya is the basis for me to take what I am not as I am. So when I take myself as I am the body or I am the mind or I am the buddhi because they are limited because they are part of the creation and one buddhi is different from another buddhi because of the reflecting mediums can be different. So the subtle bodies can be different. So each I take myself I am the subtle body that is buddhi pradibimba chaitanyam. You go into a little bit analyze analysis of this but when I take myself I am this because that's all the the ahankara ego involved as I am this, I am this, all my bio data is nothing but identifying I am the subject, the conscious entity with, or with the inner entity this. So there is a invalid equation there but that's what we take it because we do not know who we are. So the starting point is Mula Avidya. Mula Avidya means it's a fundamental ignorance and this is what some religions call it as original sin. Not that I didn't eat an apple therefore I am born. There is an original sin because I don't know myself and therefore I take what I am not as I am and that is the root cause of a problem. When I take myself, I am only local and I perform the action because I do not like the limitations. Therefore, I accumulate vasanas and vasanas have to be exhausted. They form as the desires and desires into agitations and agitation to the actions. Therefore, vasanas get accumulated. Those undigested vasanas are the vasanas that are not exhausted or put into my account and that is the total account which is a sanchita karma and of which I am bringing here as a prarabdha karma. So this all this package is part of the subtle body because vasanas are essentially the intrinsic tendencies within. So according to Vedanta we have a mind and below the mind we have essentially vasanas as a part of it. In according to the Western psychology, you are talking about the conscious mind, subconscious mind, unconscious mind. But we have a mind, 
and with the mind we are talking about essentially the vasanas as essential ingredients in which a particular mind my mind thinks in one way your mind thinks the other way and these tendencies to think in the direction are set by because of the vasanas my likes are li dislikes are different from your likes and dislikes so the whole subtle body consists of this mind package along with the vasanas vasanas are cause for my birth so therefore it becomes a karana karana means a cause for the karyam the effect that i have so mind with the vasanas which are essentially the product of some of the things that are ready to germinate called prarabdham that means the package that i am bringing in to exhaust in this life therefore i need a conducive body to exhaust those particular vasanas and therefore i occupy a particular womb in order and give birth to or take a birth in the form that are the conducive to my vasanas so when i take a birth and the birth depends on a particular family a particular parents and the parents have that vasanas also so there is a samishti vasanas also governing my birth also it's not only my but my vasanas that are dictating it is their vasanas demanding the birth of that child in that environment so whole package has to be worked together and that's how the whole system is being run and that is what ishwara does because he gives the results of the action is called karma phala data result of action is giving a but for the results of for the vasanas that you have so everything is predestined uh, destined because of my vasanas and the other samishti vasanas are together is the cause for particular but so when did i start that they we cannot say because the vasanas have to be there for giving birth so how did the vasana start how did the vasana start this vasana start because of previous life or previous to previous life all the way then previous life how did the vasana start in the previous life previous life vasana started because of previous to previous sir when is the beginning of the vasanas there is no beginning for this it's called beginning less why because it is due to mula avidya that means fundamental ignorance so you have to ask the question when did the ignorance start ignorance cannot start ignorance has to be beginning less because we give example of example of the chemistry we asked i don't know chemistry says when did my ignorance of chemistry started it is from the beginning i don't know chemistry so from the ignorance cannot start if ignorance start means there was a beginning for ignorance that means i was knowledgeable before so i cannot become ignorant once i have knowledge so therefore ignorance can never start beginningless and therefore because of the beginningless ignorance the my taking birth is also beginningless therefore we call it the the vasanas and the and the subtle body is also beginningless and it can end because ignorance can end when i have the knowledge then my chemistry ignorance can end when i gain the knowledge of chemistry same way when i ignorance of my own self that is self knowledge can end when i gain the knowledge of self same so just as particular knowledge will eliminate those no, those ignorance chemistry ignorance is eliminated by chemistry knowledge physics ignorance is eliminated by physics knowledge a self ignorance can only be eliminated by the self knowledge all other knowledge i can be phd in many other subjects does not help in knowing what it is that's exactly the problem of narada in the chandogya upanishad where he states i am a, i have a phd in 60 subjects more or less but still he is suffering and he is unhappy because he doesn't have the self knowledge so he approaches sanat kumaras to teach them and that's how this knowledge is essential to eliminate any other knowledge will not do it the knowledge of the self alone can remove the self ignorance that's also part of this understanding now this subtle body consisting of the vasanas and because of the vasanas i have the karma phalam 
karma bell means the fruits of the results of my previous actions and we already said i am the, i am uh, the what i have is a destiny but i have a free will at the same time where i can do not to do or do another way kartum sakyum akartum sakyum anyadha kartum sakyum so for a human being i can make a decision to go against even my own prarabdha or even my own destiny and perform an action counter to it and that's also because of the privilege of being a will so i can progress i am not a prisoner of my past i am also the master of my future also because i am given the intellect buddhi to make a decision process so all that is important all the properties of the the subtle body belongs to that particular body uh, death is nothing but subtle body getting separated from the gross body why death occurs because the next set of vasanas are not conducive to exhaust by this particular body the particular body that it is there being used is not is not conducive and the next vasanas are pulling and they need a different body therefore it leaves the body and goes that's exactly krishna starts in the gita where in the statement natve vaham jatunasam natvam neme jana dipaha nasaiva na bhavishyamaha sarve vayam atah param or so gita upadesh said you are crying where there is no reason to cry because you are crying for the bodies body is not the person there is an individual the subtle body that is occupying this particular body and it leaves that body and that essentially is a part of the subtle body and we also mentioned it's also called linga shariram because that which remains as something other than itself is lingam lingate iti lingam that which points something different and here the subtle body is pointing to something different what is it pointing we mentioned that every one says i am a conscious entity who is saying it a human being a, a conscious person he says i am a conscious entity i am an existent entity that means i am a chaitanya swarupam but subtle body is inert matter inert matter cannot be chaitanya swarupam that means it can, it's not a conscious entity it is unconscious entity so therefore there is something else other than the subtle body trying to make subtle body to say that i am conscious entity who is saying it is mind only saying it but at the same time mind doesn't cannot be subtle body, the conscious entity so there is a problem there where mind is inert but says and claims i am conscious entity so where and how it became conscious entity even though it inert and that's where what is an individual what is a jiva or the the person that we are talking about i am so and so all that we are talking about on my bio data when we introduce yourself we glorify ourselves how it is and based on my body is qualifications or my emotional relationships or my intellectual accomplishments i i identify myself i am 5 feet tall i am this long and i am born here i am with a brown skin or a white skin or a yellow skin all those skin properties i take myself as my property by identifying myself i am this body So by identifying with the with the mind i take myself i am the uh, the emotional aspects of it it is essentially i am related here i am related to that person i am son of so and so i am husband of so and so or wife of so and so so emotional relationships along with the particular association with the mind is constituting as my identification so identification with with the with the local mind i say i am this that is identification with the emotional mind i relate myself also i relate myself as i am an engineer or a doctor or so and so 
identifying myself with the buddhi so who i am who i am depends upon with what i am identifying at any instant for transactional purposes I identify myself with the buddhi or identify myself with the emotional center or identify myself with the gross matter depending on that i i keep changing or i shift my identification but i am all of them are actually none of them why because if i can identify with this and with that therefore either not this or that but i am something beyond but only identification for transactional purposes this has to be understood so when i identify myself i am something different so whenever in any statement as a jiva as an individual i don't claim myself as just this but i am plus this is added and that's what we call it ahankara so in the ahankara there are two aspects involved when normally ahankara means here oh, he is very is ahankari it means egotistical person so ahankara is where the he is proud of himself all that we associated with the ahankara or ego egotistical person that ego is different or that's a part of it but it's different from vedantic ahankara even if i don't have any of those i can have still ahankara because vedantika ahankara involves i am plus this body mind and intellect i need that for transactional purposes even a gyani who knows that i am not this still has to occupy a particular body mind intellect to claim i am here i am hungry i am feeling sleepy all that ahankara is involved and even shankara when he talk when he writes the bhashyam he says i am writing this bhashyam who is writing that i am is essentially there is an ahankara involved but there it is knowing for the purpose of transactions i am occupying a particular place and localization is required for transactions actions so that ahankara is vedantic ahankara where if i know that it is i am playing a role there is no problem but if i don't know and take the body mind intellect as myself then i have problem because the problems of the body mind intellect i take as my problems so one has to be careful this is ego so even gnani has to occupy a particular body has to say i am this he doesn't have to say this this body is hungry or this body is sleepy say so normally say i am happy i am hungry i am sleepy so for transaction purposes he may be identifying with the body with the mind and with the intellect at the same time he knows i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the intellect because i am the conscious entity that enlivening the subtle body as well as the gross body all that is implied in this analysis that's why we are going into details of what is anatma to find out what is atma because these two are coming together now how exactly involved in this jiva in terms of the bimba pratibimba vada we'll go into more details we just talked about a little bit in the last talk but we have to go understand a little bit more because we need to separate and understand who is the one who is really self realization to whom does it body require the mind requires self realization or atma requires self realization who has to realize what this has to be very clear we'll go into more details in the next talk so we'll stop here om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate om shanti 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 hi hari hi om sri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om